Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Aloha. Welcome and thank you for tuning in to Sister Power. I'm Sharon Thomas Yarbrough. This afternoon, Sister Power will briefly discuss two current exciting topics. R-E-S-P-E-C-T, Aretha Franklin, the Queen of Soul, and more than words, the Honolulu African American Film Festival. And I, you know, ain't no way that I would not discuss anything about the Queen of Soul, uh, Aretha Franklin. And we just wanted to take this moment to the first segment of Sister Bar is dedicated to Aretha Franklin, the Queen of Soul, because we have unique backgrounds. We're both black women. Her father was a Baptist minister, and my father was a Seventh-day Adventist minister. Ms. Franklin was raised in Detroit, and I was born in Toledo, Ohio, only an hour away. Our family spent many memorable times in Detroit, uh, which is uh, the Cobo Hall. We would go there, and I loved it there. And Sister Power's second topic, more than words, the Honolulu African American Film Festival. The Honolulu African Film Festival seeks to empower, enlighten, and entertain our community about the cultural richness of the black experience. This afternoon, Sister Power VIP guest is Taylor Chang, director, Doris Duke Theater, Honolulu Museum of Art. Welcome to Sister Power, Taylor. Hi, thank you for having me. We finally made it. We're here. We did. <laughs> Good. Yeah, this is exciting. Tell us a bit, a bit about what you do at the Honolulu Museum of Art, where you do director of Doris Duke. So tell us about sure. that. So I oversee the Doris Duke Theaters, which is the film, music, and lecture department of the Honolulu Museum of Art, located in Honolulu, Hawaii. And, you know, the theater oversees over 12 film festivals a year. And we have a year-round film program and a year-round music program, as well as an education program. And uh, one of our featured film festivals every February is our, the Honolulu African American Film Festival. And um, the theater and the museum prides ourselves in uh, having over 150 community partners. And the African American Film Festival Committee and all the partners that come together to support uh, the festival every February are uh, are among them, and we are so thrilled to be able to work with you as well as the rest of the committee to make that possible. And we have a, a, a clip that a collage of all of our events that we've had over the years, and we're going into our eighth year. And I love this one with um, that's a great Spike Lee spectrum. and Josephine Baker and yeah. Muhammad Ali. It covers, I guess, all seven years. All it seven like years. It yeah. Oh, Maya Angelou and Anita Baker. And, and this is so wonderful about um, the film festival. And, and very quickly, while we're talking about the film festival, I just mm. wanted to give a little history about Hawaii. Yes. And the Hawaii population for 2018, based on the most recent estimates released by the U.S. Census, we estimate the 2018 population of Hawaii 1,431,603. million four hundred thirty-one and six o three. That mm. is the population. So Japanese is twenty percent. Uh, Filipinos is twelve. Chinese is eleven percent. And the reason why we're so excited about um, the African American, Honolulu African American Film Festival, blacks or African Americans, we only make up 1.8% here in Honolulu. Mm. And what's so wonderful about this, and we want to thank the museum for seeing the vision, is that we're still here. We're going into our eighth year. And it's not easy when you're only dealing with 1.8% of the population. Mm. So we want to first thank the Honolulu Museum of Art. We want to start off with uh, St Stefan Joy Yost. Yost. Yeah. Stefan Joyce saw the vision mm -hmm. and said, we're going to do it. Let's do it. Let's figure it out. Try mm -hmm. it out. And then we had Gina Caruso, mm -hmm. and then a a B, Abby mm -hmm. Algar, and mm -hmm. then you have stepped up to the plate 
and has taken us forward, and we want to thank you for that. Of course. It's been a really great um, journey, really, and evolution in the past six years that I've been in the museum. And, um, you know, what you were saying in terms of, you know, the percentages and, um, you know, when you look at the numbers and the makeup of the community, um, you know, it's one thing, but what what's special about the festival is that um, the audience makeup, the people who come out to support the content that's included in the festival, um, really makes up a, a, a great spectrum of those numbers that you, that you just listed. Um, it's not just the local black community that's supporting this content. It's um, all different kinds of people in different um, sectors of the community that see its value and see how the festival is um, really a platform for civic discourse. And it, it serves as a bridge between um, uh, conversations of race that's happening on the continental U.S. And we're able to kind of bridge the conversation in a local context in a way that's unique and boundary pushing and, and challenging. But it's good, and people recognize the importance of that. And it's a lot of fun. And over the course of, um, we're going to try eighth year, we've done over 70 films. Yeah. And with shorts, and we've had um, different various type of events yeah. to fill in. And first we started off with, uh, well, we have it doing Black History Month, so that's yeah. in February. Yeah. So we want people to, to have that listening ear for 2019. Sometimes in February, we'll let you know, you'll let us know, and, and we'll get the word out. But I want people to know that mm -hmm. the fun times that we have, that when we sit down and go through the process, tell the people the process, how we choose the films, and how we go about it. Yeah, so, you know, as a committee, um, you, as a collective, we screen films, and as a collective, we decide what films to include in, in the program. And during, you know, the viewing sessions of the films and in, you know, our conversation of, of the curation process, it's a lot of really interesting uh, topics and questions crop up. And, um, you know, the challenge of selecting films that best represent um, black aesthetics and black perspectives of African Americans and of the African diaspora is um, a really challenging feat, which we manage to do every year as a collective. Um, and it's a really beautiful partnership between um, you know, the curatorial staff at the museum as well as with the community. Um, and it's, 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 for me, it's, it's um, educational, but also, um, as you said, it's, it's very enjoyable. Um, and it can be enjoyable and challenging at the same time. Oh, of course. Yeah. yeah. Anything that's successful, it just takes a lot of hard work. And what I love about our committee, and we do have a picture of our committee. I did want to talk about the festival is organized by a dynamic group of committee members who are dedicated to promoting a vibrant culture arts scene in Hawaii. And of course, to the left, WA, Sharon Yarbrough, president and founder of Sisters in Park Hawaii. And we have one of the founding members, uh, international artist John Nichols. And we have the city editor of the Star Advertiser, and we have the civil rights attorney, Daphne Wilton, who's also an author. And we have Tadia Rice, and she is a performer and an author as well. And of course, Hawaii's first African-American woman, Judge Sandra Sims. And this is the original um, Honolulu African-American Film Festival Committee. And we also have two new members. Mm. Which is exciting. And tell us about our two new members. Yeah, Akemi Glenn, uh, Akemi Glenn who's the executive director of the Popolo Project, and uh, Ethan Caldwell, um, a professor at the University of Hawaii in the Ethnic Studies Department. And so we have, we're expanding the, the perspectives and the voices of the committee, and um, it's been exciting to see the growth over the past few years. Yeah, it is exciting. And what I enjoy about working with this committee um, over the years, there is no hidden agenda. We have some dynamic, brilliant, sharp people that are on the committee, mm -hmm. and we all come together and we just make it work. Mm -hmm. And the fun part, you know, people have been asking me about it, um, what's going to happen next year? Are we going to have another opening reception? Because we have some, we've had fabulous food that was served by various vendors. Mm -hmm. And, of course, we have the, the drinks and the entertainment. 
Yeah, so you know, you're you're talking about the opening night. Yeah, that, opening that night. The festival has been known to have every February. So yes, we're we're looking to have one in next year. And and you know, as the festival grows, there's it's we can evolve it in, in the way that the collective, you know, as a as a community, we we think the festival needs to evolve. And so that can include a reception. It might not include a reception. It could include guest speakers. Yeah. It could include different types of films. It could include live music. And you know, over the over the years, we've experimented with all these different types of formats and mediums in which to um, uh, elevate the discourse, in which we talk about um, um, black perspectives and and local perspectives, and how to bridge um, conversations on a national level and, and on a local level, which is exciting. Is that is exciting, and I think we have a picture of one of our red carpets, one of the first one. Well, that is the, the committee. Uh, there it is, right there. That was our one of our first red carpets, and this is how we roll. We say, "Come dressed for the part." This is exactly what we do. We have Tardia Rice, and of course myself in the middle, Daphne Barbie, and Marsha Joyner. That was so much fun to dress up, and I think that was during the time for Josephine Baker. That the, probably that is, was I the time so. that everyone would come in and and wear your best for that night. And we just have so much fun. Mm -hmm. And another thing I would like to point out that we're always sold out. That's right. It's it's. And you know, as what we were saying earlier, in terms of the ways in which the community comes out to support the programs, and I think it's a testament to um, the way in which uh, we've been able to make the program relevant. Um, and you know, I think the fact that the program uh, focuses on topics and themes that are provoking and challenging um, it, it excites people, and I think people want to be engaged. Um, people want to be part of of that sort of community building and that this like collective effort to address the most difficult topics that are facing us when we're talking about race yeah. and when we're talking about politics and when we're talking about um, identity and how that takes on unique forms in Hawaii. Um, and we had just the other day uh, the great event with ta Coates in conversation when we were looking at, um, at moderated by Kemi Glenn and she was able to kind of guide this conversation in a way where we can uh, look at the intersections between this idea of blackness in the continental U.S. and blackness in the Pacific. And, you know, it, things like that where it allows us to open up new pathways for exploring um, our assumptions of identity um, for the black community as well as for the non-black community. And I think, you know, going back to sort of, you know, the what you mentioned in terms of the fact that we're always sold out or whatnot, is, you know, people are People are engaged in that, and they realize that this content is relevant to them. Absolutely. That it's not, you know, everyone can find an intersection into the films and, and the type of art that this festival is, is supporting. And what I love about our festival is family friendly. Mm -hmm. We even showed Being Elmo. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> in one of our films. <laughs> so we have something for everyone. Mm -hmm. And that's what's fun about it, that you can come out. And we've had excellent sponsors. Uh, Geico was one of the sponsors. Um, we've had, name a couple of our sponsors that we've had throughout the years. The you know, African American had, um, Lawyers had, Association. Mm -hmm, uh, most recently, the Popolo Project, as well as um, individual sponsors. As um, We've had a lot of individual sponsors. Um, and you know, the museum really does put a lot of resources into this program, um, and we're really proud to be a part of it. Well, yeah, you know, and and not only resources, uh, the committee. There is no value on our time, mm -hmm. and this is what I love about it. Yes. Everyone puts comes to the table, yes. put our ideas on the table, yes. and for the past seven years, we have been there and yeah. we continue to fundraise if we can. Yeah. And when we come back, we're going to talk more about how the filmmakers and writers can contact the museum Great. and show their artwork. Great. Thank you. Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, inviting you to come visit with us on Cannabis Chronicles, a 10,000 year odyssey, where we explore and examine the plant that the muse has given us. And stay with us as we explore all of the facets of this planet on Wednesdays at noon. Please join us. Aloha. I'm Jay Fidel, Think Tech. 
Think Tech loves energy. I'm the host of Mina, Marco, and Me, which is Mina Morita, former chair of the PUC, former legislator, and uh, Energy Dynamics, a consulting organization in energy. Marco Mangelsdorf is the CEO of ProVision Solar in Hilo. Every two weeks, we talk about energy, everything about energy. Come around and watch us. We're on at noon on Mondays, every two weeks on ThinkTech. Aloha. Welcome back to Sister Power, and our talk for today is More Than Words, Honolulu African American Film Festival. And we're delighted to have Taylor Chang, the director of Doris Duke Theater, here in the studio. And we're talking about going into the Honolulu African American Film Festival. Mm -hmm. We're talking about going into our eighth year. Yes. And I would love for you to tell the people, to tell the film writers, the directors, mm. the filmmakers, how can they and how should they submit their information and where should they submit it to? So the best way to do that, if you go to HonoluluMuseum.org, to our museum's website, and if you go to the Doris Duke Theater main page, there's, we list the specific email addresses that filmmakers can submit their work to. So. All they would need to do is um, go to our website, check out the email information, direct contact to either me, my colleagues, and to just send us an email. Will you repeat that website again? Honolulu, just a little slower. Sure. So they can get that. So Honolulu Museum, one word, dot org. So real simple. Real simple. Is there a time limit? I would, um, if we're talking specifically about the February program, we would probably, we're, we're looking to um, uh, receive submissions, I would say, anywhere between now and uh, December, uh, oh. at the latest, preferably between now and maybe end of November. Uh, but, but, you know, anyone can submit content throughout the year. Is there one specific person that they should send the information to? Is I there a, say, a committee um, at the museum that looks over it and decides? It would actually be me. Oh, so, <laughs> so I mean, you Taylor Chang, everyone, here you are. She's the then one. My 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 info is on the website. So. Okay, your info is on the probably web. easier to just direct them there than I can just have to. I think so, Taylor yeah. Chang. You're the one, the director. <laughs> so I want my friends who've been calling me from Los Angeles. Sure, they you can know, just send it to you. And yeah. what another thing I'm I'm excited about. More people are talking about coming in February mm. for their vacation. Oh. So they want the earlier that they know, yeah. they've been hearing so much about it, especially when we had uh, Muhammad Ali and we had one of the gentlemen that worked with Muhammad Ali. Mm. And then um, Nat King Cole, we talked about Nat King Cole and James Baldwin. And what was so exciting is we had women writers and women filmmakers. We mm -hmm. highlighted them. Yes. And Patrice Colliers and Elisa Garza, the co-founders and the founders of Black Lives Matter, that was a complete, you know, it, we were sold out. And when people heard about that, well, why didn't we know in advance, Sharon? Sure. I mean, I think it's a testament to how um, how uh, quickly, as we're saying, people like to get their tickets. And, you know, we typically release all that information a few months in advance because, you know, we, we do need to take the time to look at all the content and together as a committee and as a group um, determine what the program will be like. So unfortunately, we're not there at that at this specific moment, but we will get there in a few months. So, I mean, everyone should know that, though, it is February 2019. Yeah. Yeah. And so we'll try to get the information out as soon as we can. And then we'll show the uh, picture of our committee again. So when you see air this show, reach out to the committee. Well, this picture here is very special. This was our last event. And David Goldberg was one of the committee members. And oh, we, we miss you, David. And this was a red carpet event with Andre Leon Talley. Oh, that that's was that event. Then? Yeah, yeah, that's it. That, that was, was our red carpet year. event. And the next one, we're going to show the film committee. And Taylor, you're there to the left. And there's Marsha McFadden and Sandra Sims and myself, Sharon, international artist John Nichols, Tadia Rice, and the civil rights attorney Daphne Barbie Wooten. 
any one of the of the members they can contact them as well to sure. get additional information sure. about what's going on for 2019. And I guess um, the best way to contact the committee would be through the Facebook page, right? Let's talk about the Facebook page. Great. So, I mean, there's if you go on Facebook and you just search Honolulu African American Film Festival, you'll you should be able to find it. And so I guess just send a direct message, yeah. and the committee will re will receive it. Absolutely, that's a great idea. And and please like, share, comment on the Honolulu African American Facebook page. We just have so much fun. I mean, the people are just in the audience. They're what I love also about mm. the staff. I, I want to commend the staff at the museum. We show up with a smile, and they reciprocate by welcoming us into the the theater, showing us where everything is, and, and I love that about Thanks we appreciate your that. staff, we, we, we appreciate, and once I start naming them, I, you know, I know there's Sarah Fang and Manette. Ferrer, and Ferrer. we have a really, and you know, we have a really, we have a team of gold at our theater, and they go above and beyond, um, and we're always so proud to be part of all the programs that we facilitate in that space, so, you know, Sarah, Manette, um, Alex Singer, uh, Shane Miller, we have an amazing front of house staff. Um, and, uh, you know, I think it, it's, it's easy for us um, who work at the museum to see the value of those programs. Yes. And, and we see the impact in real time um, when people, you know, physically come together as a community in the space and have these, uh, uh, these perspective changing conversations. And we see it happen every week. Uh, we saw it happen the other day with the Tana Hasi Coates event. Um, yeah, you see the direct impact of, of the power of conversation and the power of community building and and um, the the value of independent spaces uh, to you know in, in facilitating those experiences for people. I think we, you can't. Um, you can't. You don't want to underestimate the power of of, of these events, these experiences, these experiences of bringing people together and enjoying art and using art as a platform for civic engagement. I can go on and on about this. Uh, absolutely, but, yeah. and it's a beautiful place to come and bring your friends. When your friends are coming here to visit, mm -hmm. the Honolulu Museum of Art should be a place that you bring your friends for the tour. It's mm -hmm. absolutely lovely. And thank you for mentioning that as well. Yeah, the museum um, is just, it's, it's, it's a gem. In, in, in Hawaii, and uh, it has so much to offer from the art school to this gallery spaces, to its cafe, to its shop, to the theater. Um, you know, we're talking a lot about the theater program right now, and we're yes. just one dynamic program amidst, amidst um, a, a very a, a wider spectrum of programs that the museum offers. Um, so thank you for, for mentioning that. Absolutely, and we want people to become members. So tell us, <laughs> tell the people who are not members, we definitely want to plug, give that a plug. We yeah. need more people to join up and be, and get their membership. Yeah, thank you for the. You know, um, if you become a museum member, you know, it, it's really the best way to be connected to everything that the museum has to offer. And you know, you do receive discounts. You do receive you know certain you know special invitations for for events. Um, but the best way to become a member is again to go on to the website, so HonoluluMuseum.org, and um, you just click membership web page and, and you can sign up right online. Right online. Mm -hmm. right. And you do get discounts to all the theater programs, so. And we need discounts living here in Hawaii. <laughs> One of the best incentives. <laughs> exactly, yes. we need that. And you know, people ask me, it's, it's a simple thing, about parking. Let's just oh, give them yeah. a little quick so info par about parking. So, you know, aside from street parking, we do have a parking lot behind the art school on Baratania Street. And uh, the, the theater also has a parking lot on Kinao Street, which is open to the public on the weekends and in the evenings. So there, there is parking available. You have, you know, you have a few options. Oh, good. And yeah. we can, you and I could just go on and on and talk. I want to show the collage again of all of the events that the Honolulu African American Film Festival has done throughout the year. Mm. And I, 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 we really had a good time with Anita Baker's film and James Baldwin's film. 
and Maya Angelou. And what I loved about the Maya Angelou, on that night, we passed out various sayings from this poet mm. that the attendees were able to walk away with. Mm. And I still have mine. My friends said they still have theirs. So there's always something, there's always a takeaway when you attend our film festivals um, at the Honolulu African American Film Festival, at the Honolulu Museum of Arts, Doors Duke. And how, how long have you been working there now? Six years. Oh. It went by really fast. My goodness, you've been with us <laughs> the whole time, really. <laughs> it's been, I mean, it's been fun. It is so fun. It went by really quickly. <laughs> yeah. Well, before we leave again, let's tell our viewers. Yes. Not only our viewers, we do have the Honolulu African American Film Festival doing Black History Month. But again, let's let the filmmakers and directors know where to send the information to. To you, Taylor Chang. Yeah. So um, you can email me, and my, all of my contact information is on the website. So if you go to honolulumuseum.org, um, it's all there. And just go to the Doris Duke Theater main page. Well, this has been so much fun. There's so much more we can chat about. And, and thank you for having me and for being able to spotlight the festival. And, and thank you for your work on the Film Festival Committee. And, um, and I can't thank the rest of the committee enough for the community and their partnership and the collaboration because, you know, no, organizations can't do it alone, especially no. when you're talking about community building in um, real effective ways. You have to build partnerships. And um, so your partnership, the committee's partnership, has been essential in the growth of this festival. And we can only look for more, look forward to more. It's something to get better. Yeah. So everyone, stay tuned. And Taylor, thank you so much. Thank you. I just this appreciate so this. <laughs> I'm Sharon Thomas Yarbrough, your host of Sister Power and Aloha.